everybody, we're on the road again. I'm heading to Indiana to go hunting with Chad McCoy and his black and tans of Black River Kennels. So that's your first black and tan you had? No, I've had other ones, but this is the first of this bloodline. Okay. And uh, like I said I got him, it had to be 20 plus years ago. Bought him on, actually, he was at on a moat, and a kid needed truck insurance money. <laughs> not, no lie. And he had a flyer made, and it said uh, Black River Hammer, and he was just like a little over a year old. And he said he'd treat 80 some coon with him. <laughs> so he sold him. I, I brought the flyer home. I called him. And he said he sold him and he went to Virginia. But the guy called him back and said the dog went too far. Oh. So brought him back. So he needed insurance money that night, 700 bucks. So he brought him over and me and Brad went hunting with her, the best blue dog I had at the time. Yeah. And Hammer Tree 5 Coon on I couldn't get the money out fast enough to pay him. But uh, I traded him a. Uh, a seventy-five dollar twenty-two and six hundred twenty-five dollars. <laughs> Pretty good deal. <laughs> I'm Chad McCoy. And, uh, this is Grand Knight Champion, PKC Champion, Black River Poncho. He's four-year-old dog. Partner here is Brad Heil. He owns half of him. So, All right. Let's turn him loose, see if we can free him. Sounds good. He's moving it. Six, seven. So this dog's name is Poncho. Yes. Uh, what are his parents? Um, his parents, his dad, his sire is uh, Knight Champion McCoy's Black River Hammer. And his dam is uh, Dual Grand North Ohio Embry. So you own both the parents? Uh, Brad owned the female and I owned Hammer. Okay. Um, Brad owned Embry. And uh, uh, Hammer, I've, he's actually a frozen semen pup. Hammer's been gone for I, I, Quite a while. I would say probably seven to eight years, hmm. I'd say. And Embry, this is... Uh, She's been dead three. 
three and her poncho was her last litter. Oh geez. So, but we'd made that cross because Ambry, she hunted real hard. She's real mouthy on the ground. Hammer was a dead loner. They was both good dogs. And that's just like Embry was one of Brad's favorites. So I'd had Hammer collected when he was 10 years old. And um, I wasn't expecting, you know, to get much semen off of him. And he got six breedings off of him. Well, that's pretty good. And I didn't realize the reproducer that he was hmm. until, you know, which I'd made a cross before. Um, with my Buffy female and him and got a female named Black River Muffy and uh, she won the baby stakes and I made her, she made Grand Knight oh, I mean she was probably before she was three years old hmm. and all the hunts that she had won was out at major hunts okay like she didn't just want to go to the club local hunt. hunts yeah she went to like the winter classic black and tan days um, trying to think where else leopard hound day she won first um, but but that's the hammer. I think he has 39 pups. I think five grand knights and one night champion. Hmm. So have you always hunted black and tans or you've hunted other breeds before? No, I used to, I used to just be a pleasure hunter and I'd hunt whatever tree to coon. Yeah. Didn't matter if it was a walker, whatever. But uh, I had blue dogs for the longest time until I got my old hammer dog and that's what converted me to the black dogs. Yeah. So that's pretty much all you hunt now, just black and tans? That's it. That's all I got. But uh, like I, the blue dogs I used to have, like they was meat dogs, you know. Mm -hmm. Coon was worth a little bit of money. It was fun to just, you know, go out and kill, you know, a bunch of coon in the night. And like I said, yeah. I wouldn't consider them competition dogs by any means because they chewed real bad on the tree. <laughs> and, you know, but when they treed, they had a coon. Yeah. That was a $20 bill in the tree, you know. These black dogs, the hammer dogs, what got me stuck on these guys. and. That's what I've been with for 20 years now. So, figured I better just stick with what's working, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, this dog, did you train him as a pup or did you get him already started? Or Actually, I gave him away as a pup. I mean, Brad gave him to a guy named Trace, a uh, good buddy of ours. And uh, he likes messing with pups and he'd get it started. And then he, he don't ever like messing with them. He gets them to a certain point and then he's done with him, he's bored. Mm -hmm. So he's, I think he's right out a year old and got him in October. And uh, I just took him from there, he'd run a tree. I just put a season on him and just, uh, you know, he just progressed and got better and better. Well, you know, a lot of my dogs, I, time, if I keep them from the time they're a little puppy, I get tired of them by the time they're ready to be hunted. <laughs> yeah, so I I'm know what you mean. I'm almost better off to like get rid of them as pups and then maybe get them back when they're about ready to start hunting. Cause you know, I just get irritated. They're barking in the pen. And, you, know, <laughs> you just get kind of tired of them. Yeah, they wear way. on you. Oh yeah. So when you do start pups, how do you like to do it? I'll, I'll see if they're gamey at a young age, about three or four months, you know, I'll show them like a cage coon. And if they really act interested, then I'll make a drag with that coon and um, see how they do with that. But then if you know they're not old enough at a certain age then, until they show more interest. But like I said, I normally by six to eight months, if they're not doing it, I probably don't want them. Yeah. He's moving out pretty good. Three there we go. There we go. Yeah, see that black spot? There he is. Yeah. Poncho treat another coon, we're gonna get out here and go to another spot. <laughs> calm down, calm down. See, where'd he go? Ah. 
Ponchos opening up that direction. It's seven, seven thirteen. Seven thirteen. Lefties point six. Lefties point six that direction. Completely split. Do you have any females bred to poncho right now? Yeah, actually, I have a uh, Tyler Parks is female. Uh, her name is Sadie. She's bred to Poncho, and then a uh, Garrett Garrett Tweed um, from Portland has a, a female named B that's bred to Poncho, and then we're going to breed uh, our female Black River Sadie to Poncho this week. Actually, here in about two days. Okay. And this will be the second cross, and uh, Lefty's off the first cross. And then we've had good results. Is that your favorite cross you made with him? You think they're or? so young? He's this is the that's the oldest litter. So from what I've seen, I really like that cross. They're not two years old yet. There's a bunch of uh, one-year-olds and eight-month-olds yeah. out of him that's doing really well. Sadie's one of the best females we got. Yeah, silver champion. One PKC Black and Tan Days 2018. One 2018 UKC Black and Tan Days. She's queen of hunt. What's she out of? She's off my Black River buddy dog, and uh, Jeff Nelson's a uh, uh, Mandy Two female. Okay. Uh, Sadie, she's she just turned eight years old. Hmm. But she's won a lot of hunts for us. I think she got a little over six thousand one. Mm -hmm. Mostly small hunts. Yeah, if she was somebody else would have owned her and took her to the bigger hunts. Uh, you know, the bigger mon money hunts, she'd have been a platinum champion, there's no doubt. He sounds good in there. Yeah, he does. Yeah. yeah, she floats real good. He's got her now. 750. Man, that's tomorrow. I think they will. Yeah. They got it worked up ready to go. Have to drive over and get service yeah. connection again. He was at point eight when we lost him. The lefty's getting it done now. Yep, lefty's in their tree. Good boy. I'm just glad it was warm. <laughs> Did it get in your boot? Yeah.
and weighed seven and a half pounds. Jeez. And it was two and a half foot long. Huh. And she, she just got real sick on us and uh, I took my sisters a vet and I took her up there and she removed her spleen. Now she acts fine. Came in heat. She looks good. Acts like a pup again. We're gonna bring her. I remember whenever um, I first started winning with Buddy, you know, I only had just like a few trophies and I'd keep them in my office, you know, and then all of a sudden they started, Buddy I started winning a whole lot with and then that whole office was full. <laughs> so then pretty much all those trophies I'd bring out to the barn and then I took, you know, the plates off a lot of them. At one point when I was making Buddy a grand night, I had won 24 out of 29 cast. Hmm. Like he was just that consistent. And then I'd go to like, I went to Walker Days and he won Grand Knights first place. Black and Tan Days he did the same and English Days all in the same year. Jeez. So then, you know, he made it to the top 100 three or four times, I can't remember, but I just never had no luck, you know, once I got to that point. Yeah. You know, it's just, that's, seems like that, it's my kryptonite a little bit. I can get to the top 100, but just getting past there, it's, you know, I just don't ever have the luck. Oh, yeah. You might. Yeah, I hope one day. But Autumn Oaks, I've done, I can't complain. We've yeah, done we really well. Right there. <laughs> I think I've won the National Grand Night part for the Black Dogs five times, three times with Rapper, yeah. and uh, twice with Buffy. And them are both pups off of Buddy, which, you know, that was my main stud dog at the time. And, uh, but then I've been high scoring dog of Autumn Oaks three times. Once was, Brad won with Sadie once. She won first in the night champions. And then uh, Poncho won first in the night champions. And then yeah. placed eighth in the register one year. I'm trying to think. Uh, but uh, Autumn Oaks has definitely been our hunt. Say so we we can't complain. Yeah, about pretty good. I'd probably say my most favorite hunt that I ever won that you know made me feel the best was probably the baby steaks, the super steaks with, with this Muffy female, which was Poncho's half sister. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it was just it, you would have thought I won the world hunt then. You know, that, <laughs> that was a pretty good feeling. The pup had only been out five times. Jeez. But. That was pretty exciting. Yeah, she just didn't make no mistakes. Some other nope. ones were slicking up, and she pulled off a den and in the PKC Black and Tan days. Yep. We took one, too. <laughs> yeah, well, Brad, he was hunting Sadie, yeah. and I was hunting Rapper, and uh, it was down the wire. I think Sadie treated one more coon than Rapper did. So yeah. he got first, and I got second with Rapper. <laughs> But Buddy, he's he just actually just got nominated to the PKC Hall of Fame. Well, that's awesome. So that was a pretty big accomplishment for reproduction. Yeah. I think his pups have won almost fifty thousand. That's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, for a black dog today, that's, yeah, that's pretty good. You know, I know a lot of people can win that in one hunt, but nowadays they can. Nowadays. <laughs> but yeah, that was a pretty big deal for me to have him get to that point. But, you know, these dogs, I remember 20 years ago, whenever I started, I got hammered. You know, I didn't know what his, what he went back to or anything. We just knew he was a coon dog and he was the most independent dog I've ever owned in my life. Yeah. Like you could cut him towards any dog, he would not back. <laughs> and like if they was running the track together and they treated the head of him, he would, he just go one tree his own. But if they backed him, he was fine. Good. But he would not back another dog. He was good and straight too. Never had no, no trouble with him. Never, never off game. game. No, no. Nothing. Hmm. Like that. But uh, I remember, I remember I got on line and I was asking people like, you know, what's these dogs go back to? Because it's just a bunch of PR dogs. And this guy, Ken Adair, had messaged me on the Pro Hound and said, uh, Dana and Freeland White at the Northern Ohio had this line of dogs, but they wasn't competition dogs. So I remember I got a hold of them and I ended up buying a, a little female named uh, McCoy's Black River Blackie, which Mike Poe, he hunted her a lot for me, done a lot of winning with her also. And I bought her when she was, she was about seven, eight months old, you know. And you know, she was just kind of a little backwards in a cast when she, until she was about four years old. Like I never really competition hunted her 
And I told Mike, I said, you know, you can take her and hunt her. Well, he just started winning, <laughs> you know? Yeah. She was always by herself. You yeah. know, was good about having a coon and stuff. So then uh, Dana and them, they, they liked it that I would get those dogs because they didn't like going to the hunts and they just, they'd get them started. Yeah. And I, I think I bought Buddy when he was about 14 months old. Yeah. And then we went back and bought Buffy and Buffy Boyd. and then there was a dog named Boy. They was litter yeah. mates. Buffy was probably my all-time favorite competition, though. but she's still alive. She's down here in the stall. She's 13 <laughs> years old, and I just Jeez. let her wander, run or wander around. But uh, she was action-packed. She'd be struck for a hundred. She'd tree her own coon, get a piece of yours. I mean, she was everybody's nightmare. Hmm. Anybody that ever drew Buffy, they remember her. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, so, she'd shut a lot of dogs out. Yeah, she'd get treated so fast they. She'd start running track, 30 seconds in, they'd say you're lying. 30 seconds later, she's treated with a can. <laughs> it was amazing. She's a good dog. And then I think I got Rapper. He was about, he's six months old when I got him from Dana. We're being Dana was partners on him. And he's a he's almost 11. And uh, I've, he's on the top reproducers list. Buddy, Buddy and Rapper and Buffy was all three on the reproducers list at the same time. Jeez. And they was both off of Buddy. Uh, actually, Buddy, he died three years ago, so he's came off the list. Rapper's still on it. I think he's number two, current hmm. reproducer right now. That's crazy. Uh, I just had some pup. He's actually getting ready to have a litter of pups here in the next week. I'll Mike Post you now. Okay. So, but yeah, he's still, Seeming still good at almost 11 years old. Like I was saying, the Poncho, you know, he's our next dog that, you know, we're going to breed with and try to take pups from that. We we tend to like to, you know, breed our own dogs. Now, I'll, we'll buy an outside female, but it has to be a good one. Right. Like, I mean, we're not saying dogs that uh, can't treat coons won't reproduce, but that's not what we're, we're looking for. So we bought a female uh, smoking blackie. She got 15th in the world. We bought her from Roger Gurley. And we bought her to breed back into our dogs because Poncho's mom and her have a lot of the same blood. Yeah. A dog named Splitter. And he got good and Abby. And goes back to Jet breeding, which it seems to cross well with my my dogs like Buddy and Rapper and stuff like that and Hammer. So we bought Blackie to breed back into our dogs. We bought her to breed with, but I actually put wins on her for this classics championship that we had last week at Black and Tan Days. And uh, so we had, Brad couldn't make it, so Austin Terrell hunted her and I hunted Poncho. And we both got into the final four. <laughs> and Blackie beat me, you know, so it didn't make me feel bad when Black, your own dog beat you. Yeah. So she got first and I got second. <laughs> so it's a pretty good feeling, yeah. being one and two. Yeah. That's pretty good. But like I said, we we bought her to mainly breed, but you know she's still capable of winning. Yeah. And hunt and put her. In. And then, uh, like I said, we got that young pup Lefty off of Poncho, which is his, his oldest litter, and they won't be two for I think a couple more months. And I uh, took him to the Super Stakes, and he won one early round. Got beat late, but he had that hernia I was telling you about earlier, and he was getting sick on me, so I had to have that fixed. So we're just now, tonight was actually the second night he's been out in a month and a half. Oh, yeah. So. I'm glad I got to see him tree a coon. He's still yeah. got a lot of go left in him. He's got. Yeah. He's one Do you know how far, he world. Went, how far he went that last time to tree a coon? He was 0 .8. 0 .8? Yeah. So I knew he went a ways. He, uh, he's got one thing on his mind. He wants to get through there and find bushwhack one, I guess. <laughs> yeah. He reminds me of Buddy. Yeah. Slipping down the edge. Which, you know, all our dogs, like, which, we've not strayed far away from this line of dogs no. because you don't find the dogs that will hunt like this in a black and tan snow. Yeah. And that's one thing I gotta have is hunt. Like, I'm not gonna go through the woods walking around, you know, <laughs> hoping they trip over one. Yeah. So this ranger is definitely, you know, a plus when you're hunting a dog like that. Yeah, I imagine. But it's definitely made me lazy. <laughs> Well, it's help get your dogs in shape, at least. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can do a lot of hunting. Chad will be on his ranger, I'll be on mine. <laughs> we can 
cover a lot of woods in one night in just a few hours. Yeah, I bet. Helps out. We've had that. Uh, our club has had some big coon, little coon contest, you know, and we'll make the deadline, you know, oh, probably about four hours after, you know, from the time you sign up. And, you know, people just don't understand, well, how, how do you kill so many coon, you know? Well, Brad's hunting on his ranger. <laughs> you know, and I'm hunting on mine, yeah. and they're all walking, you know? Yeah, we might hit 10 woods each. <laughs> yeah. You know? Just drive up within 50 yards, shoot the coon, roll out. Yeah, just in and out. Nice. Seem to be throwing some good ones, some young ones. We've got some good prospects. Yeah. We've got that one in Austin's right now. And yeah, Austin Trail's hunting a pup. It's off a of hammer and Sadie, which is Poncho's dad, and uh, Sadie's off a of buddy. And uh, that, that's a frozen semen cross. But they're eight months old, and I mean, we're liking what we're seeing out of them. I mean, we call him the hammer, the, <laughs> the, the little hammer one. And, uh, you know, from the times I've hunted him, he, he splits every time. For eight months old. You know, that's, that's pretty, pretty good. good.